well, yeah, it's called Missing Child, and it's been a long time in 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 the progress, really, in you know, in the process of making it. Because we first spoke what over a year ago, yeah. really, when we were talking about putting the exhibition on the launch night and so on. <clears throat> you asked me to contribute something then, and I think when we when we first spoke, and one of the things that you said that really sort of caught my attention was this was that statistic: sixteen thousand. Uh, children a year going missing from care and and you're right if you if you add to that the ones that are not reported and the ones who are not in care but they go missing anyway the numbers are a lot bigger it's awful to think you know those those children and, and where they are and it got me thinking about how how do I represent something that isn't there how do I take a picture of somebody who's missing yeah and and I had this idea that we we leave a trail of evidence everywhere we go in the world. We leave litter and we leave graffiti and we just, you know, we leave stuff around us. We leave footprints Even and... this coat. Yeah, we leave things behind and, and we leave little sort of echoes of ourselves wherever we go. And, and yeah. so I thought about the idea of representing the absence of a person by looking at what's the echo that they've left behind children missing not only gone vanished into you know god knows where but but missing from a place where they could be involved in something engaged yeah. in something and and uh, and contributing in some way yeah something yeah. and and therefore there's a sense that that we're missing them as yeah. much as they are missing you know the problem with the care system is that it doesn't care yeah. And how can it? It's a thing, it's a system, it's a set of rules and paperwork, it's not. I think if you talk to any individual person, same as in, in healthcare, an individual person cares. But you put that person into a big overbearing system where there's challenges and there's not enough resource and there's not enough facilities and, and people are under stress, then uh, all that they can do is provide the basics. And I think, you know, if somebody made the... the, the a point to me about the, 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 what they need is love, not care. But God, that's such a that's such a challenging thing, isn't it, for us human beings to give ourselves uh, most of the time, never mind other people. So I think I, I think resource, you know, is an easy one to say that's a that's a problem. But I think the problem starts further back. It's you know how are children up children ending up in care, yeah. and I think one of the one of the things. Um, not through any fault of any of the professionals working in the care sector or in schools or anywhere else, but just because of the pressures of time and so on. I think a lot of behaviour and a lot of things like graffiti and behaviour that gets labelled as, as bad or wrong and, and gets judged is, is a child trying to express themselves, trying to communicate and not knowing how to do, not having a language for doing that. Yeah. And I think if we had more space and time to listen and to interpret what people are really trying to say. And I think that's a really in, important thing about art, is giving people lots of different languages for expressing themselves. And I think if we had more of that early on, then we could avoid some of the chain of events that then leads to... It's generational, isn't it? It is. Once you get an adult who's subjecting their child to something, they're soaking that up, they'll pass it down again. You know, these kids didn't create themselves. Somebody somewhere um, decided, you know, they were going to bring a child into the world. And that's not to say that they have sole responsibility for that. As a, you know, as a community, as a society, we have collective responsibility because those children are our future. Yeah. You know, both literally, they're going to be our carers when, we, when we're in, oh. <laughs> in homes, yeah. um, but collectively, they're inventing the stuff now yeah. that's going to solve all the problems that we've created, hopefully at some point in the future. And we talk about things like, you know, global warming, for example, yeah. um, being an obvious one. And we're looking to younger younger generations to find solutions that, yeah, that our parents created. And, yeah. you know, and the, exactly, the doctors and the, and the carers and the teachers of the future. So, you know, by by caring for children today, there's a little bit of selfishness in that, that collectively we're preserving our own futures. Yeah. So I think there's this real strong drive for a society to care across generations. But now we live in this world where societies, cultures, communities have gotten so big, yeah. it becomes unmanageable. And we're never going to go back from that. But I think, you know, what could change in the care system? I think, 
having fewer kids in care, obviously. But then how does that happen? I think by engaging and listening and giving them away. And, and as you say, breaking that generational chain of events where you've got parents growing up who don't know how to express fear. Yeah. And so it comes out as anger or it comes out as absence or it comes out as depression or whatever else. But fundamentally, it's fear. And kids learn that's the language through which you, you have your needs met and, and you yeah. know, through which you get your life under control. So if we can give kids, I think, a different language, a different way of expressing that, then we can, we can influence. Photography? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, you know, for, I mean, for me, I, it's something I've always been interested in. We try and empathise. We try and put ourselves in other people's shoes. You never can. You never know what somebody else's inside of their head is like. No. You can't ever see through somebody else's eyes. But I think this is the closest approximation we've got because the camera is this really strange impartial thing observer yeah. it doesn't care what you're taking a picture of it will just record it for you yeah. so you know tr a trivial example people's holding the pictures they've got lampposts growing out their heads or they've got you know people doing stupid stuff in the background or whatever because that's not what they were looking at when they were taking the picture right, the yeah, camera is just impartial exactly yeah, yeah the camera just takes it all for you yeah. um, and I think that that impartiality forces you to look it forces you to look around, you know, on your phone, the frame, and think, right, is there litter on the ground? Is there a lamppost in the wrong place? Is there whatever? Yeah. Like, otherwise, you know it's going to be in the picture. So it forces you to look more at the world around. And I think that's, I think it's connecting with memories through, through spaces that you recognise. Like you say, you, you know, you've never been in that room, but you recognise what it is. You, yeah. You've been in rooms like that. And I think it's that connection with the real world that I find interesting but also then as I say this impartiality this taking something out of the environment that it was in and put and, and literally putting it in a different environment I mean yeah. literally taking a changing room and putting it in the middle of an and art gallery it's and, art. <laughs> yeah and now it's art I mean who'd have thought that thank you for having me it's been uh, uh, it's been really challenging and interesting and and to to work on it and uh, and to be part of all of this really shocked people honestly even just this section alone like amongst everything it's just all fits perfectly thank you thank you <laughs>